the three bullets. Hello, everybody. Uh, January in the year of the Lord, 2023. I don't know if we need to be religion agnostic, but that's how it is today. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, TOS Tech Talk. Um, let's talk about it. Uh, we have lined up a few topics in our um, discussion board. I don't know about priority. Uh, shall we go easiest first or hardest first? Good. Gage, easiest first. Toth website. Any updates on that one? Cool. Um, should I share my screen? I don't know. Maybe. I will. I will share my screen. Let's get it. So uh, past couple of days, I would have been mocking up some stuff for the website. This is a link to the issue. Um, I'm going to share my screen in just a few seconds, if I can find the window. Um, so what I did, which one is this? Is this one? Yes, OK. So what I did was I created a big epic. Um, which links to other epics. Can you guys hear that? Is it? OK. Yeah. There's someone mowing the lawn outside. Um, so what we got here is a new issue in the website repository, which is a epic that's going to look at converting the website to Gatsby. Or it could be another React framework, but Gatsby is a good static one. So I think we should stick with that. Um, update the UX resemble a Figma design. We can look at that in just a second. And I think we could discuss if there's any doubts on the design or changes. It's based on um, a docs, some docs we put together a bit ago of what we want a user story to be for a user looking at the website. And then there's uh, restyling the documentation to match the website styling. So um, if we open up the Figma and we go to this issue, this is sort of the meat of it. Um, this is going to talk about looking at the header, the nav bar, but more importantly, for the actual content, we have the project cards. Um, I'm linking this issue right here, which I think kind of embodies looking at description, either like a summary of each project and a um, summary of each project, details and other bits can be uh, fleshed out in this issue and maybe linked to some doc and those can then be used to populate this new graphic so if we look at the this is our original so this is the original kind of just mocked up um on figma and this is sort of the skeleton i came up with um same thing with the nav bar on top, maybe adding the logo here and a call to action up on the top right. Um, but I did a little case study and looked at a lot of different websites. Um, for example, I could pull in this one right here. I looked at a bunch, but they all, all these software companies are ones that are not necessarily software, but sort of these new modern websites use this kind of format of having a logo a simple nav bar call to action which call to action matches this call to action and similar to us we have a title slogan and then a really big poppy image or graphic or whatever which is this sort of design is pretty common throughout every single site and then we'll have our projects our products and then sort of the why 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 thoughts and sort of like this is why maybe we have graphics maybe we have charts and adding the features blah 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 and look at here sort of same thing we have like what is thought we can put a resolution story right there and then we have some features we kind of already have that except it's a little bit more spread out so you see we have same thing called action ideally i'd like to have these match because get started and get involved they go to different things but they look quite similar or they sound similar and this is sort of like the why thought, but there's no product. So what I came up with, you still have this sort of why and everything, and then you have your projects down here. And this might be pinned projects, featured, 
and then you can go see all, which will take us to a page, which I've said right here will be create um, an all projects page that's going to be similar to something like this, where you get like all the projects sort of listed out, maybe with some sorting. Um, then possibly an open source community details section. Now, this is what I came up with. Uh, we got our logo, and then this is all placeholder. So I mean, there will be different names, but the th like maybe four or three different drop downs. Call to action. Um, this call to action will be the same as this, and then kind of some eye catching thing. Um, I like the idea of I saw this on a couple other sites adding like a terminal, and the terminal could have like a, a thought a thymus advise output. Um, we could animate it. Um, if we look at snick.io, they do something um, quite similar, which I thought was interesting. You see how it kind of pops out like that. Um, if we go down, we have a Red Hat IBM. We have sort of like what is Thoth and some gibberish. And then we have this is sort of why Thoth. This is just some straight up copied and pasted from our other site, um, reusing those logos. And then you go down to projects. So there's two different types of projects. We've got, I mean, different ways we can display it. We can do a just a plane with the title and a description, similar to how the the normal view on the Red Hat site looked like. But we could also add something like this, which adds to like why would we use that? Uh, I I think I saw that being used over here. Yes, on HubSpot, which look at them, similar, similar. Um, but they got this, so they have this sort of title description, but then like popular features. So this popular features could be a good way to sort of tell users what is the correct um, use case for you or correct project for you to use to integrate Thoth. Um, so when I say, hey, you're a Python developer, I like to use a CLI or um, or something like, oh, I use GitHub. Um, I'm not much of a developer, stuff like that. Um, and then you scroll down more, then there could be some, some page about the community, um, how to get involved, um, maybe some like statistics. So there's a couple sites that like sort of just throw statistics down there, like stats and graphs, and say like, here, this is sort of like, um, not necessarily why you stuff, but like, why we are like, like, sort of reassuring the customer, like, hey, this is like, this is legit. We have so and so, and this the back up. This is how many projects. This is how much we've. We could add a lot of the stuff we've um, analyzed. How many Python projects? Stuff like that can go down here, which would be pretty cool. Um, numbers usually help people sort of think of a product as legit. Um, yeah, so that's that's what I have now. There's, um, y'all should have this uh, issue right here to take a look at. Um, I'm going to fill out a little bit more in this section, but I think it's a good starting point. Any questions, discussion points about any of it? I think it's good. It's uh, it's resembling information that we got. It's um, recreating infrastructure um, that we make to make it a little bit clearer. I I think I understood that the documentation, which most probably gonna get generated by Sphinx, um, mm -hmm. will be integrated. So so I think that is that is meaningful to have really all that stuff under one umbrella. And um, I added an action item for you, but I think you, you said that verbally, if it comes down to the um, project cards, um, it feels like, like, like we should talk about it from the perspective of a user. I think that's what you said. If I'm mm -hmm. a, a Python person on the terminal, I'm going to use Thomas Advice. But if I'm a data scientist, blah 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 blah. So that that we shed a light on our our services, our projects from from a specific user's perspective. Um, for example, um, 
uh, TOS uh, storages is maybe one of our project, which is quite huge and quite interesting um, because we are storing graph structures in a Postgres database. Might be interesting in it as a topic in itself. Um, but it might not really be interesting to, I mean, obviously it's not interesting to the data scientist who's using some stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So two aspects to that thing. And uh, if you're gonna talk to the right person, to the person who's interested in assessing graph structures from Python universe, it might be an interesting project. So we should we should focus on that aspect and, and point that out on the, on the project card. And um, definitely, definitely, this terminal must not be in that macOS uh, style. Uh, sure. <laughs> I think it looks nice and slick and clean, but we can change it. Uh, I don't know what that <laughs> amp, that uh, traffic uh, light thing you should be. But um, I, I, I agree. Uh, if something is moving over there, if Tamos is doing something, that, that would be cool. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Um, other other comments. Other ideas. Other other requests. So this is amazing. Uh, thanks for sharing all this. Uh, how about uh, like uh, behind the scenes? Like once we this is the uh, skeleton of it, right? Like behind the mm -hmm. back end of it, like uh, the preference of Gatsby over anything else is still yet to be discussed, right? Like uh, what would what could be there? Or have you given a thought on that too? I have. So the reason I would want to go with Gatsby is we could add all of this summary data and um, sort of the summary, the descriptions, stuff to populate it just right into Markdown files. So mm -hmm. we could easily add another project without having to directly touch the um, website source code. Yeah. So you would just have to make a commit saying, I am adding a project. And yeah. that should add a new link, and that should add um, more. And we could automate a lot of bits of it. So it's pulling yeah. these, it's generating these cards from these markdown files, which is one reason to use that. Um, other than that, I mean, we could use just a static site generator, which would kind of limit our ability to do some of that. Um, but there's also, I mean, there's a lot of options we could go through to look for static site. Um, no, I agree on the Gatsby's thing. I uh, also think that could be good. So uh, as a from the team, how can we help would be my next question. Um, so as a team, I think one of the main things that we'd want is getting, OK, where did that go? Um, fleshing out something like, this so getting some summary description stuff like that and mm -hmm. determining which projects we want to show first and basically that i mean and if people want to touch ui they can they can yeah. um, help out with the gatsby stuff yeah. uh, i'm more than happy to uh, knowledge share and then we could all work on that but um or like just sort of the art style, I mean, the art of it. If there's yeah. like, we want more icons, if we want, if someone wants to come up with like the perfect um, command mm -hmm. output for this, or figure out what this is gonna point to, because there's still a lot of an unknowns, like um, yeah. what does this dropdown look like? Or what does our call to action go to? Should our call to action go to that landing page or should it go to a completely new page that we need to create? Um, Sounds great. Uh, thanks. Yeah, I will. Um, I'm gonna throughout the day. I'm gonna populate that a bit more to add some of the actual concrete issues that people can pick up, and then that aren't super big epics that you have to assign yourself to. Just sort of smaller issues that you can contribute to, which I think will make it easier for people to jump in and use it. Yeah. So from my point of view, the callout should be. Um, sorry, the, the call out to the team, not, not the uh, call to action on the website. The call out to us as a team should be, um, you, you know the projects you are owning, you know the projects slash repositories you care uh, the most about. Maybe you write up um, such a paragraph. Really think about uh, Toth application repository. What is it? Why is it good? Who Who is the, the persona? What are we doing in this uh, repository? And just talk about it. Um, 
is uh, Toth application really something that we want to put up there? Or is it just like, pff, uh, nobody cares about operation anyway, so pff, let's leave it as is. Not, not saying it's like that, but uh, that should be the thought process, right? Um, because, yeah, as I said, from my point of view, something like Toth application, storages, looking at the, the persona, they might be interesting to people. I mean, uh, yeah, full stop. Uh, let's let's do that. Uh, that's uh, the the call to action for for all of us. Let's think about these repositories that we own anyways, and create such a tiny paragraph. Maybe it's available anyways because if you look at the README RST or MD of the repository, maybe it's in there anyways. Maybe it needs a little bit of refinement. If we're going to refine the README, let's think about the project card and maybe have the project card as the first paragraph of the readme. Yeah. Right. Cool. Yeah, I'll add some uh, formatting to that document. I linked the same document we used to plan a little bit of it, so people can go in there and grab bits we've already talked about. But I'll add sort of some, like, what we need out of it. So headers, bullet points, long summaries, tech used, stuff like that. So people can, if someone wants to contribute to something, knowing what technology we used would be helpful for them. So like a tech stack for each project. But yeah, I think, I think that's all I have, unless there's other questions. Feel free to also uh, reach out with like design. If like, oh, I don't really like how you did that, like that, and like don't use the Mac design, that's fine. We can, this is a open project, we can all try to contribute our design ideas. Yeah. Cool. That's 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 all I have. Well, thanks uh, for this one. Um, I don't know who added the second action item, but I get oh damn it! Uh, but I guess it is uh, also for Gage, right? Uh, you're gonna flesh out a little bit uh, what's in what's happening in that document. Yeah, yeah, I added the link. But... Cool. Um, thanks for that one. Um, feels like an an. Maybe a larger piece of work, but a good piece of work and a, and a required piece of work and a, and a external facing, so consumer facing piece of work. That's that's good. Makes clear what what we're gonna do. Sweet. Uh, and uh, always keep in mind, CNBI. Uh, we want to deliver advice to roads and open data. Cool. Um, next topic: uh, Depender bot or advice as part of build chain. Build tool chain, build chain. Uh, so they, they both come from issue comments. Let's start with the first one. There was this question. It actually came from uh, an issue that you opened, Christoph, about you know why is we had not reacting faster when it was expected behavior, right? Uh, but then the question arose of um keep ahead update manager versus dependable what would be or or similar or a similar solution uh what, what would be the, the benefits uh of one versus the other and yeah basically wanted to raise here for a wider discussion on the yeah the benefits of having uh the update manager as part of Kevahead just focused on, on no, not, not interacting mostly with other Todd components, like, for example, the advice manager would make use of, of Todd advice, but the update manager basically provides uh, updates similar to what other solutions do, right? So that's the question. Uh, I think that is uh, actually the intention and the, the purpose of the update manager, right? Uh, do the same, or, or based on the information, on the version information being available, do updates, which is very, very, very similar to, for example, Dependabot. Um, so the question is, is that is that good enough? Why do we use the update manager anyways? Because it's not really showing off uh, one of our features, correct? Yeah, that should exactly. be the question. And uh, just 
out of curiosity, Hashad, in the same issue 283, uh, you mentioned the same issue like three times. Why is that? So I uh, commented, I mentioned it based on the comments which we have. So it, it showed up like the same issue, but it's if you ah, it, okay, it's I see. Uh, okay, so sorry. The, yeah, it was not obvious uh, due to the pop up that is coming. Got it. So based on the history of Kavisha, uh, it was developed initially to showcase what Toth project can do. So the Toth advice were always the primary goal of Kavisha. But as a, as some repositories were not uh, only using well, but also depending upon some additional uh, packages which are yet to be ingested, there was this concern of uh, like how to mitigate that. So that's I guess that's that's how Update Magic came in. Uh, so update manager was used multiple times in our repositories. Uh, I guess it's been used in, in some other repositories as well. But it was a mitigated way of uh, resolving it. If advice is not working, use the update manager where it will still work. Um, that's how I see it, it as as a pro uh, as a component in in Kavisha. Uh, but it's different than de depend about the way it's been triggered. Uh, the, the way, uh, but it's essentially just Pepin doing Pepin update. Should we keep developing it? It's a good question. Uh, I don't know if we have been making any changes nowadays, but I think uh, it does what it should be. Any opinion on that one? Uh, I personally don't think that uh, the use case for it is super compelling. It, it more seems like a, a crutch uh, for for thought rather than like a necessary uh, part of the user story. Um, so that, that's just my feeling. Um, and if someone needs just dependency management in terms of developer time and features, uh, depend about it's gonna gonna beat us every day. Yeah, um, unless we really just focus on depend about this, uh, unless we just focus on providing features for update management. Yeah, I agree on that point. Uh, uh, that it will uh, uh, like. We should definitely, in that term, say use depend on. Uh, yes, um, agree. From 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 a feature comparison view and from a maintenance cost aspect point of view, that seems to be the right uh, decision, right? Um, depend on bot is doing a good job. Um, update manager is not really adding value. Why should we maintain that component? Um, that's pretty straightforward. Um, does it mean that we have to ingest and analyze more packages from the Python ecosystem? Um, I uh, the 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 certify uh, package is, uh, for example, something that really pops out on on GitHub. They notify you. Here's a problem. Blah blah blah. Going to do this. Are going to do that. So um, from my point of view, that, that raises two questions. Do we have to integrate more um, packages to be more aware of what's happening around us? So moving from the data science domain to lower level uh, things, question one. Question two is uh, the updates that Dependabot going to do, how do we integrate them in our workflows? Because they seem to be lingering around for quite some time. I am most often not being very friendly with Dependabot and just say, you don't smell like my stable smells, so close the issue. Um, how do we integrate Dependabot in our team a little bit more friendly, maybe? Yeah, uh, in that case, uh, um, maybe we should uh, retire Update Manager and uh, give uh, send out that you can keep using depend about if you want the similar kind of feature as of now the dot advice or kebishet advice is the 
priority for the team. But I guess we don't have to develop anything more on it, but we can keep it as it is. Uh, that would be my thought. Yes. Yeah, just a quick note that uh, I agree with all, all the comments. Just a quick note mention. There is, besides Dependa bot, there's also this other bot that I've seen used in other repos, uh, re Renovate, um, yeah. which is another alternative. I, just mentioning that maybe I don't think we should recommend Dependa bot uh, to no. begin with. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, uh, that is that is correct. So, uh, uh, yeah, renovate uh, dependabot. I think they are the two most popular um, dependency management things for for GitHub. Um, might be interesting how dependabot works on GitHub Enterprise. So, if it's hosted on the customer infrastructure, is it the same behavior? Um, how about other things like like GitLab and, and stuff? I don't know if that's interesting, anyways. But um, yeah, feels like uh, retiring uh, or deprecating uh, update manager is uh, the right thing to do here. And uh, we need to read up or enhance maybe Sesheta a little bit so that uh, Sesheta is approving all the dependent bot dependency updates, right? With regards to how do we integrate dependent bot in our workflow a little bit better? I mean, uh, when we say deprecate, we are not removing it, right? It still be the feature if anyone wants to use it, but yeah, yeah. we are not actively developing on it. Correct, and we are not using it for our own repositories if if not required. I don't I don't see a requirement for it, right? Yeah, I don't think so because I the the one thing I was worried about was uh, overlays and stuff, and uh, but depend about what's fine uh, with multiple. Uh, dependency files in a repository. So uh, only requirement root, uh, from what I've seen is suppose you suppose you create a new module, uh, for example dot storages. Let's say you have released it. It's not like that, but now will uh, instantly comment on each of the uh, other repositories using dot storages. Uh, at least with Capture Update Manager, I can ask for update and it will pop out a new pull request for me, uh, or else I would have to do this or wait for dependent bot to react on it. It's not that instant, instantaneous re reaction of, oh, module is released today. Let me throw out to everything. Uh, does that uh, make sense? Yes. Do we have to enable it? Um, no, we, c we cannot enable. A dependent bot doesn't have that feature, right? I haven't looked through it. I no. would have to look through that. But that's the reason why I'm saying we should, uh, like, I would say, like, for one of the reasons to prefer Capital Update Manager as of now. I believe, actually, as well, the goal would be to focus on Advice Manager and make Advice Manager actually work, right? So yeah. maybe the, the, the plan could be let's not touch anything on, on on update manager or our configuration and keep using it but still focus on on improving Quebec, uh Quebec advice manager to the point where it's we can actually replace update manager with and, and those request those updates that you mentioned Harshad but not from update manager but from advice manager right yeah totally uh, even initially, the Kavishet update manager was not for all users. It was just for internal toth requirement. We had used to run a cron job, not not of uh, not a GitHub bot. But when we were transitioning to use Kavishet advisor or rest of the things, because we are transitioning to GitHub of bot, it became a feature for everyone. Uh, but it was initially just for us. Yeah. But yeah, as you noted, let's not develop more on update manager and just focus on advice manager and uh, rest of things as people use to get them use. Yes. Nice. Other comments? Um, 
what do we think about adding more packages to our database? Is that, is that required? Can we see which need to be added? Yeah, so we are doing those uh, uh, ingestions time to time. Like there is the package release, which looks for new releases of each package. Uh, also includes uh, graph refresh, which refreshes things. There is advice, like people, if they are asking advice for a package, it will try to uh, notify that. I think that component is little uh, to be fixed, Like, uh, but parsing the output and looking for what package is not ingested, try to ingest that. We, also give the opportunity to users to say, okay, I don't see these packages, but to get them. So I guess it's also on us to look for these packages, but I think we have most of the structure in place, which looks for new packages. So we are good? I think so. Okay. If it's not happening, then we have to see if there is any issues in particular parts. parts but, yeah. Yes. Okay, let's do that. Um, uh, Kevin, I, I have assigned some, uh, let's let's replace uh, Update Manager by Advice Manager um, in all the repos. I think uh, you've done that before. I don't know if that is true for all the repos. Um, so please, please double check. Yep. Well, cool. I would, so, but we are not doing that right as of now. We would transition to it in future, right? As we What's that? Why? Uh, so the same reason, like I said, like caption updates during uh, instantaneous update I want for a module. Like I release dot storages I want it right now. Uh, for advice to work, we need to ingest it. Takes time. Uh, ah. mm -hmm. But yeah, we can go for it. Uh, I guess it. It's also or maybe to... step by step. You know when when. The moment you want to create a Quebec chat update issue, first try Quebec chat advice and see what happens. And yeah. then any issue that this happens, like fix that, yeah, uh, yeah then you do a Quebec chat update and, and move on, but at the same time learning what's missing. So it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> you can also just, Quebec chat update is basically just running uh, event update. So you can also just open a PR uh, whenever you need an instantaneous update too. Yeah. Totally. Makes sense. Let's do that. Why don't we start an ingestion with a high priority if we release some of our own modules in, in a way? I mean, that seems to be a clever automation, isn't it? Yeah. OK, let's uh, think about that. Good. Next topic, uh, TOS advice as part of the build pipeline. What is that? Who's that? Who, who wants to talk about yeah, that? That was a comment by Max, and he's not here, and we are maybe running out of time, so maybe we can postpone. Is that... Yes. But the question was there that uh, uh, the way s I thought is designed, that we are in we are, we are changing the assemble script and then using it. Uh, uh, how often do people use and things like that? Is it required? Same question. Okay. Don't know. Don't don't have an opinion on that one. Um... Maybe we should rethink all that stuff. If that seems to be like an like an uh, S2I artifact or S2I related artifact, is it really required for Tekton based pipelines? Is it that we want to focus on Tekton pipelines? That might be an interesting discussion. Uh, maybe we can maybe we can streamline some of the things that we do. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right. You're right. Any any other topics then? Cool. Thanks for your brains. Thanks for your time. See you later. Keep on hacking. Bye. 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 Bye.